we haven't seen a NASCAR in Gran Turismo in 10 years. So I decided to go and make this. What we have here is a recreation of the spirit of a NASCAR in Gran Turismo 7. Very much like the car that ran in the 2023 Le Mans 24 hours entered by Garage 56, the NASCAR version uh, at the Le Mans 24 hours was heavily modified, had a few aero packages but still remained the essence of a NASCAR, a huge amount of power from a V8 engine. The car I used for the base for this is going to be available in Brand Central head over to Asia, head over to Nissan, head into the showroom and then head all the way over to the uh, Nissan Silvia uh, Group 4 race car. This is going to be our base to make our NASCAR from. Only 350,000 credits, let's go and buy this one now. Next we want to do the V8 engine swap, so head down to GT Auto, choose car maintenance and service and then head down to the very bottom. You do need to be collector level 50 to be able to do these engine swaps or if you have a roulette ticket for the engine swap you can also apply that one. Now the engine swap we want to put in the car is the VK45DE GTR engine swap. It's a 600,000 credit engine swap. This is from the GT500 Group uh, 2 Nissan. Once you have the engine swap installed, then the next thing to do is to get the car looking like a NASCAR. So head over to uh, Showcase, head down to Content Search, head across to tick the box, which is for current car. Now, assuming you have the Sylvia selected, which you should have, this will only show results that are specifically for your car. In the keyword, we can just head over to the keyword box, uh, type in NASCAR, and then head down and choose content search. This will return all of the liveries that have been made for the Nissan Silvia in a NASCAR color scheme. As you can see, a lot of them uh, you'd recognize from many different eras of NASCAR. Uh, the Tide one, for example, is a fantastic looking livery. Uh, I have that in my collection already. And the one that really caught my eye is the Valvoline uh, NASCAR here. So to put this on your car, you need to make sure you like the livery, make sure you support the creators that make fantastic liveries like this. Uh, without these cool liveries, it would make the game a lot less enjoyable. Uh, so make sure you give them a like as you uh, choose the livery. And then what you want to do is head down to where it says uh, collection. I think it's just here. Uh, make sure you tick that and that will appear in your collection. Then to put that livery on your car, head over to GT Auto, head over to car customization, head all the way across to load style, move down to where it says collection, and these will be all of the cars that you've added to your collection from the livery list here. So here we've got the, the Tide car. So head over to the one you want to apply to the car, uh, select it, and this will start to apply the livery to your car. It will also apply any subtle cosmetic parts like wheels, uh, the wicker bill uh, spoiler for example which completes the NASCAR look and you simply uh, apply style. If you don't have any of the paints that we used to create this it will cost you uh, but we'll be good to go. If you do want to have the NASCAR look for yourself when you're creating your own livery uh, then choose custom parts head over to where it says wing and it's the type B wing that is the one that is the NASCAR style uh, duck bill wing. Uh, you can just see all the different ones here, the big sporter from originally, uh, there's the custom wing set, but the NASCAR style one is the Type B wing set. I'm going to switch back to a car I've already made and tuned. I'll go through the full tune of this car, all of the details at the end of this video after I've given you a race and strategy guide. Because not only does this car look cool, not only does this car drive fantastic, you can do Le Mans World Touring Car 700 driving that NASCAR at Le Mans and make really good uh, money with this car guys. It's a, it's a genuinely valid, fantastically fast uh, credit grinding machine. For the event we want to go to, we head over to World Circuits, head to Europe, up to Le Mans, and across to World Touring Car 700 at Le Mans. 
Now guys, for this race, we will be using racing hard tires, but make sure you also have uh, intermediate and wet weather tires purchased. This is a variable weather race. Uh, it's a 30 minute race, variable weather, and it may rain in the middle of the race. Okay, so the strategy for this race is immediately head to your fuel map and put it on fuel map number four. Uh, this will allow us to get uh, at least four laps of fuel on a tank of fuel. And this car, it, it feels heavy to drive. It feels very, very powerful. You can spin up the tires really easily in second gear. So a little bit of caution on corner exits. Use some TT if you really want to uh, add a bit of safety. But this car, it does feel like I would imagine a NASCAR to feel. It feels heavy. It feels quite forward weight bias. Uh, we'll get to that in the tune at the end of this video. Uh, but it just feels very, very powerful as well, guys. I'm literally going to rip these cars uh, down the main straight here so we're going to get in the slipstream down the Maldon straight to the inside uh, and we're just going to literally send it by all of these cars so so fast 170 miles an hour up to sixth gear 180 we're going to be touching 190 miles an hour uh, in this car here breaking around the 200 board maybe just before uh, to be safe looking for the board here on the brakes all the way down to second gear through these corners here Again, cautious on corner exits with the, the throttle. The car will really want to spin up in second gear, but you can catch it, it's not too bad. Uh, for brake bias, I have preferred to drive it with the brake bias more towards the rear, um, but you don't have to. It's kind of personal preference, guys. See what you like. It's definitely more stable with brake balance more towards the front. Uh, just here, we're looking for the second board in the trees third gear for the first part of the chicane, second gear for the second part and then rolling onto the throttle on corner exit. Incredibly <laughs> aggressive amount of power this car has, it's ridiculous. I think it's in the 650 horsepower region and we're just blowing these cars away down the Mulsan straight like they are standing still. Into the Mulsan corner, I want to break just before uh, the curb starts all the way down to second gear and looking to get these cars on corner exit. Again, rolling on the throttle, reasonably slowly. Wheel spinning all the way up to 90 miles an hour in second gear and we're not far off the lead of this race already. Only five seconds uh, off the lead of the race and we're already in fourth position. So we absolutely destroy the cars in this race. I think you probably can use fuel map number three. Uh, three or four is where you want to be depending how your fuel economy is. Um, brake and downshift through Indianapolis and second gear for this corner here. They're going to be a rotation there. And that's with that rear with brake bias looking really good. I do shift up, short shift to second for the corner exits here, and that is the lead trio ahead. Can we get them before we get into the Porsche curves? Uh, potentially, we do have the power, that is for sure. Uh, I'm going to get that guy, probably not these ones, uh, and through the Porsche curves the car feels a little bit cumbersome to be honest, uh, down two gears, three gears, third gear through here, now you can actually spin up the tyres in third gear while you're in these corners, up to fourth gear for a bit of safety, uh, but we're going to be in the leaders race by the time we get to the finish line I think for the end of uh, lap number one. That might be a bit of a track limits issue. Oh, I'm running out of space on the outside of the track here, guys. Are oh, they going to send it on each other into the braking zone? Bit of an AI battle going on. Get the corner exit. We have four minutes, three for the lap opener. Um, and we're just going to finish off the race like this guys now at the end of the second lap I always like to check the weather to see what's happening uh, zoom out all the way it looks like we're good to go with at least one more lap there's no weather on the radar at all that we need to worry about so we can go one more lap at least cross the line and that's going to be just over four minutes 
as a race lap. It wasn't a particularly great lap, guys. So this car has so much potential to be really, really fast. So halfway in to lap number three, and we can see on the radar there is a little bit of um, blue coming in, but often it doesn't rain when it's just that really light blue colour. So we're going to monitor this um, to see how things play out as, as we get through this lap and to see if we need to pit for tyres at the end of this lap. Now the rain is starting to come down now, the wetness meter is starting to rise a little bit. I can see very dark blue on the radar approaching so I think now is the right time uh, to pit for some uh, wet weather tyres or intermediates I think is probably safest. Uh, but because we're on lap number three and we can do four laps of fuel and it's only a seven lap race uh, that we need to do to win this one. Uh, we have actually, I think, managed to get this into a one-stop window. So into the pits, uh, we are going to go for the intermediate tyres. It is the right thing to do. Uh, we're going to fill the car to the top because we don't know what else uh, will happen during this race, but a full tank of fuel should get us at least four laps worth, uh, four laps, which is perfectly what we need to do to finish this race. Guys, it's pit stop time now as well. Make sure you go and check out the links in the description below for the GT Omega stuff. I use the GT Omega RS6 seat, uh, the classic wheel stand, uh, the rear seat frame. I absolutely love it. Uh, there is an exclusive discount code for you in the uh, description below. 5% off. CD5 is a discount code. Uh, go and check that one out. Uh, and guys, look at this excellent NASCAR livery. Uh, the guy's there with his uh, can to fill up the car. Uh, and we're going to exit the pits with the intermediate tyres. Now we need to be very careful because the track will change so different, so completely with these intermediate tyres and caution is definitely uh, recommended. Especially with the amount of power this car has. Uh, TC would be my recommendation uh, if you're just trying to grind it with credits using this car. So it's really hammering it down now, mega, mega rain. Uh, just break a bit earlier for all of the big braking zones uh, when you've got wet weather like this. And just be careful on corner exits as well. Spin the tyres up in third gear, absolutely crazy. Now it's got that interesting in-between bit now where the track's just about dried out. Uh, I think if I did another lap on these uh, intermediate tyres on the drying track I'd just rinse them out completely and they will be completely dead so I am going to have to pit one more time uh, for the last lap of the race just for some racing hard tyres uh, and just be cautious coming into the pits because the pit lane is going to be wet uh, that bit of the track doesn't dry out it gets no traffic really uh, so we're going to throw into the pits put a new set of racing hard tyres on we don't need to fill up because we're only doing one more lap in this race and when exiting the pits be very cautious uh, when switching from wet weather tyres to dry weather tyres because the pit lane exit will also be really wet as well so it takes a bit of time to get to a dry bit of the track where those dry tyres will start to work and just always remember that uh, dry racing line is incredibly narrow so be very cautious with kerbs and track limits you'll hit the wet bit of the track and you'll cause yourself some problems so time has expired now we need to get to the line to finish off this race and just keep on the dry part of the track we've just missed the the dry part there is a prime example of just staying in the dry groove and not trying to do the racing lines uh, and yeah i gotta say driving this nascar faux nascar around Le Mans in the garage uh, 56 style has been incredibly fun it's a very engaging car to drive it feels heavy it feels powerful um, it may not be the fastest car to do this uh, Le Mans World Touring Car uh, 700 grind but it, it gives you that variety and I think that's what a lot of people are looking for uh, and the enjoyment of driving a NASCAR around Le Mans and earning money while doing so, I think is, is, is definitely a winner as we're almost gonna, well, we're gonna 360 across the line and get the win. That was completely unintentional 360 no scope. In fact, it might have been a 720 no scope, uh, but we're gonna get the win in the NASCAR. So my best lap in that race was only really got one shot at it and that was a second lap and it was a four minutes, one second lap time. The rest of the race was wet and that was why we didn't really get it on exactly. 
30 minutes. And we did get the 825,000 credits because we have the clean race bonus. The clean race bonus is almost impossible to lose at Le Mans World Touring Car 700. Just make sure you avoid yellow flags. That is the only way I think you can lose the clean race bonus. So here are all the detailed tuning sheet and settings for this incredible 700pp NASCAR style build. So it is using the racing hard tyres front and rear and using the wet tyres whenever you need it uh, during the race. Uh, body height adjustments it's uh, 70 at the front 75 at the rear uh, and most of the setup really is to make the car understeer a little bit less so uh, we're a bit softer on a lot of the details in the front and a little bit stiffer on the rear roll bar uh, negative camber is set to 1.4 front and rear i have straightened the front toe angle because i just prefer the way the cars drive with a straighter front toe angle uh, for the lsd i've got it on five on initial torque and five on braking sensitivity that's to free the car up so it wants to turn in a little bit more when you're coasting into the corner or on the brakes and then on acceleration sensitivity i've got it set to 35 that's just to try and tame it a little bit on corner exit heading over to downforce i've got it set to 396 for rear downforce and maximum 200 uh, for the front downforce again trying to encourage a little less understeer in the vehicle it's the fully customizable ecu set to 100 i've got 200 grams of ballast and i've got it set to 49 uh, positions uh, to the front uh, the power restrictor is set to 79 and that leaves me with 651 horsepower I am using the fully customizable racing transmission. I've got it set to 370 kilometers an hour top speed and I don't have any manual gears adjusted, but feel free to uh, look at these ones, uh, copy them if you get lost with the gear ratios. Uh, maybe you can get some marginal improvements. Uh, no nitrous and no output adjustments. I do have the medium RPM turbocharger installed. And then for a brake balance, you can adjust this on the fly. I recommend starting with zero and move it forwards or backwards, depending what you want the car to do uh, when you're driving it. And of course, guys, this is the VK45DE GTR engine swap car. This is the Group 2 Nissan engine in this Group 4 car. If you have found this video very useful, guys, then make sure you smash that like button. If you want to know more about the tuning sheet and how you can change different parts of the car to do exactly what you wanted to do then click on the video on screen right now i've got a whole video dedicated to everything in the tuning sheet and what every single item does go and check that one out and we'll catch you in the next one